welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have everybody here once again. We have Tom Smith, who's sitting on planet Earth. That's a cool background, actually. It's really cool. Um, and Phil will be joining us in, in some capacity in a short bit. Um, I want to talk a lot today about baseball. Okay, there's a big, serious problem going on with pitchers with substances being used on baseballs. The MLB is cracking down on it, effective on Monday. And we've seen a lot of results so far showing that pitchers are, are absolutely screwed right now. So I want to talk about that, see how it impacts the game, how we feel on the subject. I'm going to talk about the NHL here a little bit with how things are looking for my team, which I'm hoping, um, I hope Vegas gets going. I hope that they can do it. I know I said before Colorado, but, you know, things can change. Um, I could give a crap about the NBA. Sorry. Sorry. Um, and then talk more about how the Red Sox are doing. All right, I want to talk first, uh, leading off for our show here with Tom on the baseball front. You aware of the current issue going on in the game? Yeah, I heard about it. Um, it's this spin rate thing. It's out of control. Pitchers have been getting a lot more feel, a lot more grip of the balls that are being thrown. And, and we've seen a drastic change of the game, especially in the past week or so. You know, I want to look in, into depth here with the Red Sox uh, at first. But, you know, it's been around the game for a long time, whether it was pine tar or sunscreen or rosin combination of some sorts. So you've had, had the pitchers get sort of a grip on the baseball and everything like that. It's, it changes how the game is. So MLB is cracking down on it, so they say, um, come Monday, that pitchers will be suspended and they keep their pay. You know, they are suspended for 10 games that they are caught using some sort of a substance and umpires are going to be checking and everything. Um, I personally have a couple issues with that. Okay, uh, my stance here is I'm well aware that this has been going on for a long time. If you even want to go back and look at John Lester in the 20, 2007 World Series, if you remember, Tom, something on his glove, he's licking some guacamole gunk that was on there. It's been around for years, you know, and they're really harping on this problem here because the offense has been horrible. It's one of the worst offensive starts Major League Baseball has had since 1968, I believe. You know, the average baseball player is hitting like 230. And that is not going to get you a fan base that wants to watch this game. That is not good. So MLB is cracking down. They're telling pitchers that if you are getting caught, you're suspended. You still get your pay and all. But I think this impacts so many players, so many pitchers, to the point where this, this, could, this could change the game. So I don't know how you feel on the subject, Tom. Yeah, I mean, substances have been, whether it's pitching or hitting, they've been a big part of baseball, at least in the last three decades, if not more. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. I don't, I don't think, I think first offense, they should – pitchers should be allowed to keep pay. I think after that, though, they shouldn't be allowed to keep, keep so their pay. You, my question here for you is, would you have kept things status quo on how it was going, or are you happy that Major League Baseball is trying to crack down on this? Uh, this I think they should have cracked down on it a little earlier. I think they let it go a little too long. I mean, this has gone on for a long time. Here's what I would like to know. I'd like to hear pitchers like uh, – uh, like a Pedro come out or a Randy Johnson or Mike Messina or even going back then, Oral Hershey's and all these different names that are still around and kicking that were playing the game, 70s, 80s, 90s. I want to hear their side of it. I want to hear what they were actually doing because if they were getting away with doing what they were, why are we making such a big deal here? Tyler Glass now, pitcher for the Tampa Bay Rays, came out on a unbelievable rant. I don't know if you heard it, saw it, heard what he had to say with anything, but he's basically probably out for the rest of the season right now. 
he's got something going on with his elbow and all kinds of different issues with the arm where he feels that because he didn't have that grip that was on his arm, uh, on his on his hand when he was throwing the ball, that that made him get hurt. And I totally can understand how that was because that's how he's been throwing so well. But it makes me think here. I think this impacts over 90% of the pitchers in the game right now. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 100%. I mean, let's be real here. If they had this substance, if they had sunscreen or whatever they wanted before they went and pitched, and it got them some sort of a competitive edge to make them feel like they have their grip and they can control where the baseball is going, I mean, I'll be honest here with you, Tom. If I was one of the pitchers in the game and everybody else was using it, I'd use it too. So we're at a, a little bit over that halfway point, well, almost at the halfway point of the season. Guess we're about a third or a fourth of the way through of the season here. And this is when Major League Baseball wants to come out and tell these pitchers who might have 80, 90 innings to their total already, oh, just so you know, we're going to change the way the game's played and you can't use what you were doing to, excuse me, to start your season. Got a big problem with that. That's, that, that's, that's one thing where you can't just go back on something when somebody already else started something. Like if they want to crack down on this at the end of the season, into next year, I'm, knock your socks off. But changing all this right now, I mean, boy, that's, that's going to be dramatic. On a positive note, though, for hitters, looking at the Red Sox from everything right now, I mean, they are torturizing the baseball right now. So you're going to see, heck, if this gets averages up to 250, 260 on average and players are doing like the Red Sox are doing from stuff, I feel that's exciting. I mean, the last two Red Sox games are, were atrocious pitching-wise. However, you got offense, you know, 12 runs a game. I mean, that's, that can be exciting in its own front right there. So it's got, it's got a little bit of both ends on the spectrum for this issue. Um, I think there's going to be more players that are going to come out, unlike Tyler, like, like Tyler Glass now. I think we're going to hear more about Trevor Bauer. He's got, obviously has something to say about it. Just follow his Twitter from everything. Um, I'm sure you're going to hear more. Probably Chris Sale will have probably something to say. I wouldn't be surprised if Chris Sale, when he comes back, he gets impacted from this because I'm sure he was doing something with it. I'm even positive that Tim Wakefield with that knuckleball was probably doing something to make that thing dance as much as it was. I don't think so because you think there it was were, natural. Yeah, no, it, he definitely, you could definitely tell the difference between when he pitched in the summer and when he pitched in like the cooler months. Look at Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole, we talked about it in the prior show that we were doing here. I mean, he came out and he just wanted to tiptoe around the subject and say, I can't answer this question right now. When we all know 100% that he's been using the stuff. Here's the reason why this is a bad look for the Red Sox here right now. Okay. You just have Cora coming off his suspension with the whole, uh, the whole Astro scandal from everything there. If players get caught on the Red Sox and they get suspended and everything, how do you think Alex Cora comes out of this looking? Pretty damn bad. Yeah. Uh, Why can't players play this freaking game legally? Why do they have to feel they have to get this little bit of competitive edge and tarnish all the history and all the great things that the game has had? It For something that you see, I'm from the approach where, yeah, I understand p players can use a certain amount of pine top. I think pitchers should be able to get something. That's that rosin bag, apparently, that they have in the mound. Well, if that's not working, oh, well. Oh, well. I think this other stuff that they've done, I personally think this scandal is going to come out worse looking than the steroid scandal. I'll be bold, and I'll give my hot take on it right now. But that's how I feel on the subject right now, because steroids have impacted, you know, some people. I'm sure that some may have not wanted to take it to jeopardize their health and their body and everything. This thing with pitchers putting a little sunscreen on their hands to get a competitive edge. Come on. 
there's more than 90% of the league that's been using this. So the game's got to change, folks. We've already seen it in the past week. I mean, look at the example from the Red Sox. I mean, their rotation right now is abysmal. It is terrible. So I think that's what you're going to see a little bit here more. Garrett Richard threw last night for the Sox. Did you like that? Did you like that game? Eight runs, six runs, something like that given up. Worst spin rate they said he's had of the year. Well, clearly he's not using whatever he was before. I wonder why his numbers were you know, half decent from before. So we shall see what happens as this continues to uh, blow up the world of baseball. Um, on the Red Sox front, okay, they're at their highest point they've been during the season. They are 13 games up or 13 games over 500, excuse me, sitting one game behind the Tampa Rays. Who well, I think the Red Sox are now going to probably surpass Tampa because of Glasnow's injury. And I just think the Red Sox lineup is one of the best in the game. The lineup is going to carry them and, pro and propel them into being that first, first place team. I think they're going to be, um, I think, I think that, that I think that's what we're going to end up seeing here. So you got to and they can get place. they can they're able to get the hits and runs when needed. Yep. Even with this pitching struggling and everything, I still think that everything that we've seen here is going to give the Red Sox the upper hand in this. So the the uh, good the good news is the bullpen's been is better than it has been in. Uh, I think you finally have your table setters. You know, Sour Morer is still someone I'm a little I'm a. It's when it's sometimes good, sometimes it's bad. Josh Taylor deserves a lot of credit right now. He looks phenomenal. And if he can be your seventh inning guy or something like that, that's great. Um, ottavino has been awesome. So long as he throws strikes, awesome. And then Barnes has been this consistent, you know, stepping in and doing it. I I'm still blows my mind. I even say it, but Barnes has been very good. Very good. He'll probably be an all-star from everything that he's had from this. So way to go, Matty Backpacks. Um, the Red Sox will take on the Kansas City Royals this upcoming weekend. I would expect two or three. Hopefully it's three for three. And they get themselves another day off before they head to Tampa. That series next week is going to be very large. That'll be a Tuesday through Thursday. And then the Yankees come to Fenway Park. Uh, that Friday night will be Dustin Pedroia's retirement night. So it'll be a little celebration there. One of the first celebrations in a long time at Fenway since 2019. So Pedroia will get the royal treatment that night. Anything else you want to cover here with our Red Sox? All right, next I want to move over to the Bruins and the rest of the NHL. We, uh, last show, we kind of were just getting over that last week, that awful uh, performance that they had against the Islanders, just wasn't able to get out of that second round. Uh, we've gotten a chance to learn a little bit more about where this team was at, what was going on, what's looking ahead towards the future with everything. So uh, Cam Neely, who I would blast off into the sunset, I think that they need to move in a different direction, came out and said that he was talking to Bergeron and Martian, and they want to try one last time to see if they can win the whole thing. And I'm not surprised by that. I'm not surprised by it because there's really not a, any other option that they can go with. I mean, the future with the draft and what this team is going to look like in free agency. I mean, the Bruins have two of the top free agents in that list right now with Krejci and Hall. There's not much out there unless you, you know, factor in a trade, which I highly doubt is going to happen. And let's be honest here. Jack Eichel is not coming to the Bruins. He's not. After how Buffalo traded with Taylor Hall and Bruins pretty much got uh, the Buffalo pretty much got fleeced on the deal. It's not happening. It's not happening. So don't, don't get your panties in a bunch folks when he's not a member of the Bruins, just not going to happen. I do think Hall and Krejci will return. I do think Tuka Rask will be back. I do think Mike Riley will be back. And I think they're going to return basically the same team, Tom. I think that DeBrusque will probably be out of here. He'll probably be a Kraken at that point. Um, they may try and figure out what they want to do with a Krejci or what, uh, not a Krejci, with a Coil and what they might want to do if there's any options out there. I would keep them because I think that you can still have more value with than without. Uh, the defense is the biggest thing that they have to do, I think. They need to figure out two additional big-time members of that defensive core because I'm not going into next season with Matt Grizzlick uh, as my number one of my number one pairs of defense. Hell no. Hell no. 
So I'm fine if he's a three, but when you put him in a two and one, he'll get exposed just like he did during this entire playoff. So I'm all set with that. McAvoy, Carlo, that's your building blocks right there. Let's bring in some more decent people. I think Riley fits that mold, and I'd like another person that's a veteran type that can get the job done. I don't like, not like old man Chara, but something that fits the mold on that. Um, I think so he's also going to be pretty disappointed to know that Swayman is probably not going to be a Bruin. He's going to be in Providence getting more time next year too. So I think I, I, I'd be shocked now if Tuka Rask isn't back as, as your goaltender. Um, I think it well, is he had the surgery there with the surgery and everything. He wouldn't return to the ice until January or February. So they might have to look for another veteran type. I just from listening to what Cam Neely said, I don't think that they're going to go with Swayman to start. Could be wrong, but that's just my, that's what I felt out of that press conference that they had is they want Swayman to have more time down in Providence to, uh, to get, to get more season. I would, I would play him. I would play him. What do you got to lose? So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, are you happy with how the rest of uh, the playoffs are going? Um, yeah. they're, they're definitely a good series, that's for sure. Definitely uh, what we kind of expected. Um, Vegas looks good. Very happy with how they're performing. I think that they'll end up getting into the next round. Obviously, they're playing in the Canadians right now. And that's just not a series. I'm sorry, it's not. Canadians shouldn't even be playing Vegas. Shouldn't even be playing. So I would um, expect. I I sorry. I just also read that Coyle had like some minor injury and he wasn't at full health at the end of the season. So I can see that. I can see that being a factor. I can see a lot of these nagging injuries. You know, Rask with the hip and everything. I give him credit for playing. You know, he's, he's, he sucked it up and wanted to get out there. I think a lot of it he had to do because of the previous year, you know, abandoned and ship. So I think he had to do that for himself. I just hope he didn't damage anything permanently. I hope yeah. that whatever is hurt, he can rehab. And hopefully it's not too, too severe. You know? But with him out for about half the season, that also gives the Bruins some financial freedom as well yeah because they really don't have to sign him right away yeah they can see how he's doing and then entertain possibly bringing him in if needed so and Krejci is taking time uh with his family and he's a unrestricted free agent which means that the Bruins may not sign him or he may not want to come back to the Bruins so. do you want him back um yes and no yes because what else I mean, you got, right? I mean, I wouldn't mind moving Coyle up to the second line, re-signing Hall, and then, I mean, finding a replacement for the third line. It wouldn't be too. It wouldn't be too bad. I don't think Coyle would be a bad move to have on the same line as Hall. I don't think it would change too much. Um, See, I don't think they want to impact that second line. I think they want Hall, Krejci, and and uh, Smith together. They do, but I mean, at the end of the day, it really comes down to what Krejci wants. I don't think Krejci wants to play anywhere else. I mean, he's played his all, his whole fifteen year or fifteen season career in Boston, but and I do think there'll be a little bit of a discount for Hall and for Krejci on that front too, staying here. You know, I don't. I, I'll actually go out here on a limb here, and I will say I will be downright shocked if Taylor Hall is playing on another NHL team. Just after what he's gone through, how the experience has been, how very clear he was saying that, this is my home, I want to be here in Boston, it works out in this situation. And I'll, I don't, he does not chase in the money. He's going where it fits him the best. And he proved it, he proved it. Maybe not this second round, but he proved it when he came here to help towards the end of the season and into that first round. I, I would entertain a Taylor Hall contract, maybe three, three years, something, maybe it's four, 
a four mil se a season, something like that. I, I would do that. I would entertain it. So that's my stance on that. Um, again, I'd be downright shocked if Tampa does not beat uh, the Islanders. I think Tampa is going to get through. I think we're looking, it's, it's going to be what Tampa versus uh, either Vegas or Montreal, Vegas or Montreal. Yep. I think it's going to be Tampa versus Vegas. I think that's what we're going to be looking at here for, um, for the Stanley cup. I think that's where things will head. Um, I know I just said, I didn't really want to do NBA, but very quickly um, I was so happy to hear the announcement that Jason Tatum didn't collect his $32 million because he wasn't voted on the all team for the season or the all, whatever they call it. So boo freaking who to you, Mr. Tatum. Whoa. Oh, come now on, Phil, come now Phil wants to come in. Oh, no. wait a minute. Hold on. I was just listening to your rapping about with the weirdly giving a crap about the baseball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about 25 minutes. Uh, but no, I, what? I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, oh, NBA playoffs quickly. It's fantastic. It's so bizarre because no team has been in this position. Go Suns. Uh, go Suns are a great team. Uh, the Jazz. Uh, guns out, the guns Clip, out. Uh, they do, and they are going. Oh, but uh, Chris, uh, what's his name? Chris Paul got COVID. <laughs> like, what, what did he do? <laughs> so he he he, uh, he he peed in LeBron's Cheerios. Is what he did. I mean, that's a pretty weird position to be in. And also, mm -hmm. either to get in the house or just have your Cheerios out leaving. Like, yeah, I bet. I bet you can't pee in them. And it's like, well, all right, here we go. Bet made. Probably Kyrie helped them. I mean, I guess. That's just a, a very odd situation logistically. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I know, boy. That's a dishwasher. Oh, but, yeah, no. Um, yeah, man. I Anyone from the West works. And I, you know, Milwaukee blew a chance to take a 3-2 lead the other night. We'll see where it goes. Kyrie might be out for the playoffs. Uh, we'll see. I know. You don't well, like Kyrie as well. I get you. Good. Anyway. Train him well. But, but uh, yeah, I don't know. That's all. NBA, uh, look forward to it. I'm looking forward to see how things go. Especially, and also Trey Young. Uh, great game uh, last night against Philly. And Atlanta's up 3-2. And Ben Simmons has proven, as my buddy said, he's a guy who looks like he has a look on his face that he's pooped himself and doesn't know why. So, and that's kind of like Ben Simmons is just that guy. They were just, actually given a lot of uh, criticism to Doc Rivers, too. You know, Doc has been in these situations time, yeah, after that's, time after time, and he just chokes right away. Yeah, you know, that's it's tough. That's a tough Hi. one right there. And what? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I don't. It, I ugh, I thought he had his team ready for this, but you know what? So did I? Yeah. Sometimes it's sometimes it's more on the player. I'm fine if it's going to be the Hawks. I mean, I'm fi I, That's totally cool with me. You know, if, if that ends up going the way that that series may go. So again, Atlanta's got a three-two lead in that. Uh, Philly, you know, just slip sliding away. Um, and anything else? Big. Anybody else big. have anything they want to add for this episode here of Face the Facts? Because I think we covered everything that we needed to today. Oh, wasn't there some weird Patriot stuff uh, going on, or the camp is going like I guess New Jersey Jones that well. is becoming. I, I think the Patriots are very frustrated with what they see with Cam Newton at training camp. So I was listening uh, last night, the night prior, and they're starting to put Mac Jones in that first group of, or that first tier, working with all of the, you know, star players for this mini camp that was going on. And they're right. I mean, let's be honest here. You already saw what Cam Newton did. I still don't get Bill Belichick's infatuation here with Cam Newton. I just don't. I just don't. He's so goddamn stubborn with the whole thing. He sucks. He's not even going to be a part of this team. I still feel Mac Jones is going to be your week one starter. I do. Not after what you did in this whole offseason. You, you damn well going to put Cam Newton on that field. Fans are going to have a tirade if that happens. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see more at mini camp. Uh, this mini camp just went. We'll see more at training camp. What's that, in another hey. month or so? Yeah, like in preseason is that, you know, in August. So you're yep. like a month and a half away from yep. looking at these people in action. And you know what? 
who knows what kind of pressure uh, Belichick will be under, not just from the people, but from Kraft. Oh, and, they're going uh, the to give it to him. If they give it to Cam, yeah. they're going to hear it because Cam is not going to be anywhere uh, near. Anywhere. He's not going to give him anything. Nothing. No. It's a so, shame. It really is a shame. Again, still looking forward to that week four when the Patriots will take on the box. That's going to be one heck of a concert. Do you think, do we do a tribute? Does Brady get a tribute? Oh, yeah, he will. It will. It'd be a shame. It will. Because tickets are going for like a thousand plus dollars. Oh my God. I can see that. I can see the majority of people, they're probably rooting for the box too. Yeah, I mean, dependent. Especially if Cam is the quarterback. It would be great. It would be great to see Mac Jones and Brady. That would be a fun matchup. Yeah, the the new age Brady against the, uh, the original. That would be fun. I'm looking forward to it anyways. Well, anyways, guys, that's going to do it here for another episode here of Face to Facts. Cutting a little bit short just because there's not so much going on after the Bruins are done, the Celtics are done, Patriots are just at camp, and we're left with the Red Sox who are in all sorts of fun things with this uh, this pine tar stick gate or stick gate, we'll call it, sticky gate. we got sticky gate going on now. So we'll uh, – let you know more about all that stuff the next time we see you here on another episode of Face the Facts. For I will say one one last thing to you. I, I agree. I think it's a great thing you said about ask Pedro Martinez about ask it. Me. Ask all those David Glavin. Ask all those people like, why, what they see, think. That's what I'm afraid. Why is no one going to these other guys that have played the game? And I think, Maddie, like you said, I think and it's, Pedro, uh, hell, even go to Andy Pettit. I'm sure in HGH user was using something to do well too. I know. Well, shilling. Ask Clemens. Yeah. Clemens is probably doing a shilling. Not that really, really anybody wants to talk to shilling. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't that's do anything. Up okay. Well, 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 oh. Uh, that's the alarm. That means we have to sign off. Evacuate yeah. immediately. We'll see you next time. <laughs>